Hello HP Touchpad users, and welcome to the unofficial Signage Mod 10 Tips and Tweaks Guide for the HP Touchpad. Right off, we are here in the Roots Wiki forum at my original post of how to install Signage and Mod, JC Sellens Preview. Now, I've been updating this quite frequently. I highly recommend you check it out. You can see just how monstrous this post is getting. Uh, I've gone over many issues and fixes and information about absolutely everything, and you're really going to want to check this out. Now we're going to work our way up in level of complexity, but let's start with a basic problem. Here I am uh, running the Dolphin browser, and the Dolphin is a web browser. A common misconception is that the Flash Player doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work in Chrome properly, but it does work in the Dolphin browser. There is issues, but you can get it to work with a little simple workaround. So I'm going to show you that right now. So we're going to start the video up, and the audio will play, but the video won't sync. So I'll show you how to fix that. So the audio starts, no video, and give it a little tap. There you go, and now it works just fine. Now it can get a little funny when you zoom in and out sometimes, but it'll play once you get it going. And full screen works as well, I just want to show you. So there you go, there's fix number one. Uh, that's how to get the Flash video players working on a web browser. So use the Dolphin browser. And the Dolphin browser is just a nice free web browser to download. Here it is in the Play Store. Go check it out. Okay, fix number two. Now new users might have to enable mass storage. So if you can't seem to get the USB working with your computer, you're going to need to do this. You're going to go into Settings. You're going to go to Storage. And then you're going to look for these three dots up here in the upper right hand corner. Click on them and use USB computer connection. Now, see here, media device, this must be checked off. By default, it will be off if this is your first time installing Cyanogen Mod, and you'll need to turn this on in order to charge your device and access it from the computer. So, this kind of leads to our next problem. Our next tip is people are reporting bricked touchpads. Well, when we say bricked, it's not really ruined, but it can be fixed. When we say it's bricked, generally we mean, you know, they don't know how to fix it. You've kind of panicked, but it is fixable. And back again in the Roots Wiki forum, I've posted quite a bit of information on it. So not only is there a fix, but you can read up in the troubleshooting section. Here's the troubleshooting on the, oh no, I bricked my touchpad threads. And there's several threads detailing what to do if this happens. Now that's fine, but there is a solution, a very simple solution. Again, here in the Roots Wiki forum, uh, user uh, Lukoyo, big thanks to him, has posted an app that basically just shuts down your touchpad when the battery is almost done. As you can see here, there'll be a link to this in the description. And that's just a really handy thing to have. So this alleviates any worry of uh, people quote unquote bricking their touchpads because you won't run out of batteries. Now the problem really is, and you can read about this in the Roots Wiki forum again, uh, often you don't realize that you have a heavy battery drain, you've run it completely out of batteries, and you have to basically charge it for a full day before it's even going to turn back on. The other thing sometimes people don't know is that you can force your pad to reboot if you have any kind of issue, any kind of lockup. You're going to press the home button which is the one down here to get you to your desktop, and the power button that you turn it off with on the upper left-hand side, or top, depending on what the orientation of the pad is. And you just hold down those two buttons and it reboots it no matter what. So let me show you how to install this handy free app from the developer. And it's just a tiny little application that all it does is shut down your device. So big thank you to him. So you, you can come get it here. You'll click his link and download it. It's just a tiny little download. 64 kilobytes and once you've got it downloaded onto your device uh, you'll want to need to file explore it. Now one of the features about Cyanogen Mod 10 is it comes with a file explorer which is a really awesome the thing to have. So we're gonna demo it here for you. So now we're gonna find the file we just downloaded. Now I already downloaded it to my SD card so it'll be right in the root directory here easy to find and it's called Battery Check APK. And you just click on that. Now I've already got it installed, so it's warning me I'm replacing it. And you just go Install. 
go open it up, launch service. And that is all you have to do. And now this application will just be a tiny little thing. It's not going to use up much memory. There it is running in, in my applications taskbar with my Go Task Manager widget here. And it basically will just shut down the pad when you get to 5%. So no worry about bricking your pad with signage in Mod 10. Just download this free app from the Rubik's Wiki forum, and the problem will be solved. Great news for all of us. Okay, now next up, I want to go back to my post here, and we're going to talk a little bit about the Acme Installer 3. Now, there's some questions about the Acme Installer 3. Is it necessary when update from CyanogenMod 9 to CyanogenMod 10 to use this every time? And why do I have to use this? And But I flashed over it, and it seems to work. And so now I've covered this here in, in my guide, and it's kind of an important thing to check out if you have questions about it. Um, now, there's a thread about it here in the RootsWiki forum by Green, which you want to check out as well. There'll be links to that. And I basically just kind of summarize some of the information for you here. So here's like partition problems and the Acme Installer 3. So basically, Ice Cream Sandwich only needed 300 megs of space. You'd have it going and running well. You wouldn't need to worry about it. But then, of course, we got Jelly Bean. Now, Jelly Bean's a bigger ROM. So what the Acme Installer 3 does is make 100 megs extra space. So you go from 300 megs to 400 megs of space to basically accommodate the larger ROM size and the larger G apps package you're going to flash. Um, now, some users have found that they'll come up with 387 megabytes instead of 402 megabytes. Uh, either of those numbers is fine and they're equivalent. So don't worry about it. And there's a way to check this. Now, I know, of course, we're going to need to check and see what's going on. But it's definitely necessary to install with the Acme Installer 3. Now, that being said, once you've installed it once, the partition size is now completely or permanently changed until you reformat the device. So it'll stay at 400 megs. So let's say you want to restore your Cyanogen Mod 10 build or Cyanogen Mod 9 build uh, from your Nandroid backup. It will restore and you'll still have the increased space. Now there's a free application that we can go check out that'll show us all this information. Quick System Info Pro. Now let's go take a look in the market for it. Another free, handy application to have. And once we install this, it's just a little application and it'll tell us some nice detailed information. So here, under System Storage, now this is the space that my ROM takes up with my gapps file combined together. Uh, now there's a gapps 4.2 package and some people were finding when they installed this they had 0, 0.00 space left. So that is a bit of concern. We don't really know what happens uh, if you run it like this for an extended period of time, but I did it myself and it does seem to work. Uh, that being said, we should try to keep some free space. Now this is a good way to check it. And this is also the same way you're going to check to make sure you have the right size partition from the Acme Installer 3. So there's some concern about errors coming up. If anything happens, you could just reflash everything again with the Acme Installer 3. Uh, but you'll use this free application to check here. Now you'll notice I have 52.98 megs free. Now I created my own uh, special 4.2 G apps because I really like the new 4.2 G apps, uh, but then I didn't want it taking up all the space. I really ran out of space with this. So I made kind of my own version of it, and it just has the most basic things. You get to keep all the system stuff, uh, but there's a couple additions, like you get the latest keyboard, and I like this kind of black new music player. It's a different theme which I downloaded. Very cool. So, you know, just a few different things in that if you want to download my package. It's a little bit smaller and it's pretty handy to get. Uh, but that being said, now there's a concern about running out of space. Now I found a little more space for everyone and you can go check this out again in the RootsWiki forum here. How to free up some space with signage in Mod 10. Now I've located 15 0.89 megabytes of data. So if you get through this installation and then you go through and you check and you've got 0, 0.00 space left, this is a safe little bit for you to take out. Uh, now I'll show you how to get there. You'll use the Explorer file manager free app to do this. It's a nice rooted file explorer. I'll just show it to you in the market. And we'll basically just delete a couple files that are unnecessary. The Explorer file manager. Now I really like this app. It's a fun fun file manager because I can do two finger kind of file management at a time. So download it here, Explore File Manager, catchy name. Now what's really neat is you get to kind of double screen it here, which I find very handy. 
So basically, we're going to start here. This is our SD card, and this is our root. So this is where our operating system and everything is located. And the SD card is where all our information and saves and stuff is going to be, all our data. Now, the root is the file that we were just looking at. That's the 402 megabytes or 387 megabytes. Now, it's not really totally safe to go in here and just delete stuff, but I've kind of tested it out. And I'll show you what I've done. You can see over here on the left here. So starting out, we're going to go to System. And there'll be a Media folder. And inside this Media folder was two things that I found unnecessary. One, there was video files. There was four video files. I've already deleted them here. Uh, but they were like an Android in Space video and like an Outdoor Scenery video. And they're just, you know, they don't do anything. So I just deleted them. And that freed up a little space. And then here, under Audio, there were ringtones, like cell phone ringtones. On the HP touchpad, that's completely unnecessary, so I just deleted them. Uh, there will be 99 of them. And what's really handy, I just deleted the whole folder. This app will let you select many icons, applications, anything at once you want to delete. It's very handy, and you can double thumb it. You can go through two file managers at once and look at two things, modify two files at the same time. It's pretty cool. Highly recommend this very interesting little app. There you go. Now, I highly recommend checking out the RootsWiki forum. My post here, I try to update it every so often, every time I get new information. Anything I find out, I will pass it on to you, so check this forum post regularly. Please subscribe to see the latest updates. I'll give you more videos like this explaining tips and fixes and tweaks. There you can see the Flash player is working nicely now. Anyways, please subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. Thank you very much for watching.